Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz. Sponsored by Georgia Power. And Go Beyond Profit. Good morning and thanks for joining us. We begin with a $55 million event facility at Zoo Atlanta that could be put on hold. Zoo officials say they're waiting for the Atlanta Fulton County Recreation Authority to approve a series of tax credits. Once that happens, the zoo can secure the financing it needs to turn the former Cyclorama building into Savannah Hall, a unique event space overlooking a new elephant habitat. Zoo officials say they submitted the necessary documents last month. The next scheduled meeting for the Recreation Authority is in November. That's past the deadline to keep the project on schedule to be completed by year's end. A key executive overseeing the largest redevelopment in South Downtown is stepping down. Jake Naraki, president of Newport USRE, will leave the company at the end of the year. He joined several others, including development principal Catherine Kelly, who left in January. Under Naraki, Newport bought about 50 properties between underground Atlanta and the Gulch. Timing could be a challenge. The project has loans that mature in the next few months, just as some analysts predict an economic slowdown. Some prominent political leaders are calling for the Atlanta School Board to rehire APS Superintendent Maria Karstarfin. The board voted last week not to renew Karstarfin's contract. She came to Atlanta in 2014 after the test cheating scandal. Graduation rates improved to nearly 80 percent and teacher turnover has declined. But Karstarfin's strong personality didn't sit well with some board members who said they wanted to see more collaboration with the superintendent. Her contract is set to expire in June. The Atlanta Housing Board has appointed a new leader starting next month. Eugene Jones Jr. will serve as the new president and CEO of the agency. Jones is the former CEO of the Chicago Housing Authority. He championed workforce development and affordable housing. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms has made affordable housing one of her top priorities. If you enjoy riding Uber's jump electric bikes around town, you'll have to find another mode of transportation. As of this past Friday, Uber no longer offers those bikes in Atlanta, but the company says its jump scooters will still be available. Safety concerns regarding ride share devices have risen following several e-scooter deaths. The city of Atlanta isn't issuing new permits to e-scooter companies. Co-working giant WeWork is continuing its push into the Atlanta suburbs. The company has leased the top two floors at Halcyon, a $370 million planned mixed-use development along Georgia 400. Two months ago, WeWork inked a deal to lease office space in Sandy Springs near the MARTA station. Halcyon offers more than 50 acres of green space, something WeWork is looking to incorporate in its mixed-use spaces. By the way, WeWork plans to go public this month. Or from co-working space to co-living space, a proposed $50 million project will offer residents private bedrooms but shared kitchens and communal space. It'll open on Inglewood Avenue, not far from the Atlanta Beltline Southside Trail. Developers see this model as a way to keep rents down in high-priced areas. The project is expected to open in 2021, starting rents about 1000 bucks. Atlanta Gaslight is seeking a $93 million rate hike. If approved by the Georgia Public Service Commission, the money would fund more than a billion dollars of improvements from better customer service to cybersecurity. The average consumer could see their monthly bill go up by about $4. The Public Service Commission will hold hearings on the request later this month and vote in December. UPS expects to hire 100,000 seasonal workers ahead of the holidays this year. 4,500 will be in Metro Atlanta. To sweeten the deal, Brown will deliver higher pay, ranging from $14 to $30 an hour, depending on the job. Positions include package handlers, drivers, and driver helpers. UPS anticipates they'll ship twice the daily average, a record 40 million packages a day. Coming up, the vision started in a basement and became a driving force for the voiceless. How the Atlanta Voice continues to give communities a platform to be heard. And later, Coca-Cola targets a new generation with one of its classic drinks, a snapshot of the new face of Fanta. And as we go to break, it's time for our biz quiz. How many Black-owned newspapers are in Atlanta? Two, three, four, or seven? We'll have the answer when we return. <laughs> 